<laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Hello, welcome everyone to Icon of the Hello, everyone. Welcome to the F World Headquarters podcast. I am your host with the most, the icon, Sean Jazz Stevens. I don't know why my watermarks is all over the place, but that's okay. Today is a very special show, as not only are you going to get to hear this live, but momentarily, a little later on, you will actually see the video portion of this, so you can actually see exactly what is transpiring. So this is live right now on my YouTube channel on icons of the F4L. And this is in terms to the our upcoming Icons of MMA tournament that is open to, well, pretty much anyone in the MMA world in the universe. So across universes. So uh, with any further, without any further ado, what I would like to do is absolutely have um what i would like to do is ultimately um you know this is going to give you guys a rare opportunity to see kind of what goes on behind the scenes of icons of the f4l for those people who have ever wondered to the legitimacy of it being random and having what control over what well you're about to see that live as i'm setting things up here uh so first and foremost i should let you guys know that in between me calling out who is facing who um i will be um marking down who is going to be facing who so i can keep track of myself it would have been smarter if i had my pen handy before i started this right hold on one second folks bear with me here we go and all right so first and foremost, let's talk about the tournament first and foremost. So we started this tournament last year. Um, for those people who don't know what icons of the F4L is, apparently you've been under a rock somewhere, and that's okay. Um, so my son and I started Icons Dream Masters, Dream Matches, years ago. Ultimately, it was called Jazz and Sons Dream Matches. And in that time period, basically the way our show started was what began as, you know, getting fan requests on what matches people wanted to see, um, you know, so, and so, you know, we, everyone always wanted to know who was tougher, Superman or Captain America, or, you know, who is the better of the billionaires? Is it Batman or is it Iron Man? And before us really was really no way to find those things out until now. Um, and here we are years later. and. Um, we we have evolved over the years we began with only having a few people here and there is now evolved into we feature now real life dream masters which are ma the male roster our dream masters and our female roster we call dream mass match um excuse me one second we call our male roster the dream masters and we call our dream our women's roster the dream warriors so that goes here in hand, you'll say. Cool. So, um, yes. So, that being said, um, um, yes, yeah, so that's kind of where we're doing it. But anyway, next month, I'm very happy to announce that we are going to have the women's, the women are going to have their opportunity at their very first open MMA tournament, as there are many tough women out there in the cross the combat world sports world as well who uh, deserve the opportunity to prove their worth as much as the dream matches masters so last year i asked fans you know when we were doing the show what we what people wanted to see as far as a, you know what kind of a tournament you wanted to see now for the record one of the things my son and i do enjoy is a good organized tournament um, we have famously we have the duos tournament, which takes place in the summer. Um, and that's always a great time. And it's always amazing to see who is going to be able to take on who and um, who the best duo or tag team in the world in the universe is. And that's open across the universe, across all platforms and whatever else. 
this is where you might see people like um, Ren and Stimpy or, um, you know, any famous team tag team and duo. And in this in November, we have our open uh, our dream, our, what we call our um, our team warfare match, a team warfare tournament where teams of four will battle teams of four. And now this year we have something special we can add to that where before it was done kind of Survivor Series rules where it was eight-man elimination matches and eliminations would occur uh, kind of the same way that they would anywhere else. Um, so on our show, the only ways to be eliminated for a tournament, for example, or for a title normally is pinfall submissions and knockouts anywhere in the building. That's a rule we usually have. Uh, so last year we decided by asking the fans, what is another tournament you guys want to see? And people said, how about with all of these combat sports, you know, kind of getting a resurgence and all of the people out there who are you know, busy training in various styles of tournaments in Brazilian jiu-jitsu and boxing and what have you, wrestling. Um, we, I, fans wanted to see in, in a tournament for MMA. So we had our first annual open MMA tournament last year, which was an epic tournament. I know this because I was part of all of it. I watched all of it. I drew all of it right here. Um, it started, you know, really started right here where I read off, much like I'm about to now, who's going to be facing who. But ultimately, this tournament has actually been going on a little bit longer because I've been actually, you know, reaching out and making sure people have the opportunity to take part in this tournament. Um, last year, we kind of stuck to the people we know, people who have earned their spots on our shows, people who have who our fans are used to seeing. People like the Adels and the Menya Boys and people of that nature who are household staples on our show um, and really are the measuring sticks on our show when it comes to those divisions. Um, and ultimately, we have an MMA BA division, which is usually held on you know Fridays or whatever else. And this year, you know, we really changed things out where we only have now two titles for the males. We have the Dream Master. We have the Dream, the Dream Masters uh, Universal Championship, which is basically for anyone that is eligible for that for a singles tournament. I'm talking about singles titles now. Anyone is is eligible for that across all platforms, entertainment, sports, whatever. But in order to qualify for the Dream Masters BA or MMA tournament uh, title that we have, and that is actually the new title. Primarily on our show, people are familiar with the Dream, Master, the Dream Masters BA Championship. Plus, you guys can kind of put two and two together what that stand stood for. But now we have evolved that into the Dream Masters BA MMA Tournament uh, Championship. As actually, technically, it's the Dream Masters BA Grand Prix Championship. Um, so it's a little longer, but it's epic. Um, in that really division is you either have to be really a hardcore individual where, you know, it's all um, in your face, uh, strong, tough and whatnot. But also on top of that, ultimately, um, it also is, um, you know, people who are trained in mar various styles of martial arts, boxing, fighting, combat, you know, whatnot. So that being said, um, it has its own division. So, you know, we also have a dream match, a dream masters, BA MMA tag team championship that we implemented to match the kind of elements of that. And of course, currently reigning um, our current dream masters, um BA MMA tag team champions currently. Um, I believe is the Menya Boys, Henry and Hiro Menya. Um, I believe. I know that they just had a match with the Adele Boys. And I'll be honest with you guys, it, it was such an iconic match. It was 
these two, these young men are tremendous athletes in their own rights. And whenever they go against each other, the only place that that match can be is at the end of the show because there's no one's going to uh, is going to top those teams. But this tournament's different because unlike the tournament, it's every person kind of for themselves. And um, before I get into who's facing who, I think we should probably go over what the rules are and how this kind of works. Um, so because it's done a little differently, and as you can see, it is done using our video game model uh, in our un Dream Masters universe. We do have our own arena that I've built that you know, you guys have not seen yet because it's reserved, obviously, for the tournament. Um, and we and we also have the 2023 Icon of MMA Championship, which is not going to be defended because the winner of this whole tournament will be getting that championship. And not only if they're a regular person on our roster, then obviously they'll be carrying it all year because as they should, they're icons of MMA. So they have the right to proclaim that. If they're not someone who's on our regular roster, then this is a way for them to be secured on our roster. And they're going to be holding that championship until next year, probably. Last year's winner, last year's tournament, it came all the way down to, and people have asked, you know, when it's open. And, and when you have teams that have brothers who are in the same kind of a sport, People ask, well, clearly you won't have brothers face brothers. Well, we don't have control over that either. Nor do we know who's going to win, as always. It's set to demo, much like our regular show is. Um, we do have a MMA match that we have, have created where it's the purse. It all takes place inside of a cage, much like in the UFC or MMA. And... The only way is to get the first person to get two points will advance. And the ways to get the points is by knockout or submission only. There are no pinfalls, much like in the UFC. So the first person to get two straight points but via knockout or submission only, two points, will advance in the tournament until there is only one person. And last year, the winner of the tournament actually had to face one of his brothers and a lot of people probably would have thought that his brother would have defeated him because he is a little older however sometimes it's not about how old you are or what experience you have it depends on how you know motivated you are and what momentum you have going and for whatever reason um he was able to get one up on his own brother to get invested in the tournament of course they're you know solid and they're tight and whatever else but it's competition it's mma it's it's sport um it's you know may the best man win in competition and in the long run it was two brothers who come from the same you know they're cut from the same cloth and they share the same blood so ultimately they would be proud of each other whoever would win would you know obviously support each other as they should right so last year's winner was ty the devil odell of all people and on our show the adele boys as i said before are kind of one of the measuring sticks of the division and ty is the what at that point ty was the youngest one of the youngest of of the adele boys um last year there were three Adele boys taking part in our tournament this year there's four but the person who came in right behind him the person who came went all the way to the end and went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ty was Hiro the Pitbull Menya of the Menya boys and of course as I mentioned they are currently the Dream Masters Universal they're currently the Dream Masters BA MMA tag team champions I believe I know that they did have a title, a, a, a match recently, and I'll be honest with you guys, I don't remember uh, who won because it was about an hour and a half of a match. So, um, and unfortunately, when we edited it, it could only be an hour. So we had to cut out the entrances <laughs> because it was just these two, these young men are tremendous in their division. So anyway, and this year, of course, 
um, you know, last year we did have Noah the Nightmare Tyndall take part. But this year, Noah's rejoined our roster, has been on our roster for quite some time now. Uh, people who aren't familiar with Noah or any of these young people, I do encourage you guys to check them out. They are tremendous athletes. They are the future of sports. Um, they are the future of the UFC. And all honestly, they have the drive, the skill, and the mindset to accomplish pretty much whatever they want. And we have the respect for them. And that's why we do our part to bring them to the world. And we get our feedback from the world and who, how many people are inspired by these young men and women and everyone else who takes part in our shows. I'm taking a sip because we're getting ready down again into the gritty. All right. So before I, um, go do this so i want to show you guys this you guys don't normally get to oh you can't still see it because of my background which is awesome so i do have a jar of a box of fate now uh which is nothing too fancy really and i also have a bag right here you can bear you cannot see it with my background oh yes you can someone well this bag contains the name the tokens if you would the the paper the names of all of our competitors who are taking part in this tournament. That's what this bag is. This box, I'm about to dump all of these names in this box, or what we call the Jar of Fate. As the Jar of Fate has had many, many uh, facelifts over the years. Um, so you're seeing this live. I'm dumping these in. And what I'm gonna also do as a courtesy of you guys is read off everyone who is taking part in the tournament before I start pulling them all out, this box is full, folks. <laughs> yeah. And as I advertised on our Instagram that we were going to have 56 people in this tournament. Uh, then after talking to my son, the other half of Jazz and Son's dream matches, we decided that wouldn't be fair to some because we can't have an open MMA tournament and then exclude people. So let me tell you what the criteria is, first and foremost, of how, who is eligible. So if you're wondering, well, who do you consider to be an icon of MMA? And when you say an open, what does that mean? Well, it's open to anyone who is who competes actively in MMA-style tournaments. But it's not just limited to just UFC or boxing or wrestling or whatever. But, I mean, there are also elements of, you know, Hollywood people who are tough in their own right, um, as well as, you know, the Ryus of the world, the Liu Kangs of the world. Now, is that fair to include them? Yes, because currently they are icons in their own right, and they're also champions. So the people that we have... In this tournament, <laughs> yep. First of all, I can let you know there are 66 people involved in this tournament. So we have multiple rounds. That's how this is going to work. So what you're going to see is as I kind of draw the names um, in column one would be the first person. The second person is going across from them. And then I will read off who is going to be – then I will – end each round with reading off who is in those rounds so people who are watching who are part of our show who know what's kind of up can know when they're facing whoever um and ultimately this is going to be um again we don't have any control over the outcomes just like we don't have any control of who faces who and if anyone watches our shows and says well wait a minute some of these names you're going to wrench in how can they face you know, such and such. Like, for example, if I was to draw someone to face, say, one of the Adele boys or the Menya boys or no, the Nightmare Tyndall, who may be someone who is a current UFC champion. I don't know if you watched our show or not, but we have had um, people who have competed against our stars, our regulars, if you would. And... <laughs> I honestly, I have a lot of confidence in our guys over a lot of the, some other people. 
Just saying, the proof is all over our our page. Go watch any of our open MMA matches. I can tell you that our current reigning Dream Masters MMA champion, which I believe on the 24th of this month, which we have one more show this month, uh, we have a rematch, and that's going to be iconic. In oh man, I, 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 that's going to be an incredible match um, because the match that they had was an uh, incredible match. But um, the Noah the Nightmare Tyndall, who was the current, was the Dream Masters MMA BA MMA champion up until last show. He has defeated the likes of Conor McGregor, Floyd Mayweather, um, and a couple, and Brock Lesnar, just to name a few. So don't think that just because of, you know, how, what they are, who they are, that they're going to be mismatched because our guys can handle themselves in a cage of any kind. And the same thing goes for the Jell boys and the Menya boys who have, you know, kind of have proven that they can go toe to toe with anyone and we give them all the utmost credit. We do have some newer people to our roster this year. We have newer people kind of joining the, joining the ranks and we have some familiar people who have been part of the tournament last year or coming back to still try a game. And we have one person who's going to be taking part in their last tournament as we believe that one of these very people are going to be inducted this year into the Jazz and Sons Hall of Fame, the Dream Masters. And I think that it's highly, un probably, um, all honesty, probably should have been on already. But um, he's going, probably going to be going in this year. So this will be his last open MMA tournament. So let me tell you kind of how who qualifies first. First and foremost, they have to currently, they have to either one, be an active, someone who has competed in any style of martial art or combat. So wrestling, boxing, MMA, you know, UFC, uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Muay Thai, any of those types of things qualify. Um, so that's the first foremost. Second, they need to be a, uh, Okay, this is going to be interesting how you hear this, but they need to be living, if that's a thing, if if that makes any sense. Um, now, in terms of of some of these characters who may not be um, actual people, they need to at least be people who have shown up time and time again in various of their own tournaments or events. You'll understand when I read off some of the names, you'll get where kind of where I'm going with that. These are single elimination matches. So whoever wins each of these, you know, events will be going on to face, you know, the winners of others. And I'm sure you guys know how a tournament works. I'm not going to insult you guys by patron patronizing you guys by telling you guys how a tournament works. I'm sure you guys kind of get how it works. People face each other. It'll break down until someone wins that round. The winner of that round will be going to um, a added to another list where all the, the winners will square off until there is only one. There will only be one icon of MMA crowned. And some of these people were there part of the last year. And again, the winner last year was Ty the Devil Odell, who is going to be taking part in this year's event as well. As so is Hiro the Hiro the Pitbull Menya, who is also a part of that. So let's first and foremost, let me read off the 66 competitors who are taking part. Um, these are done mostly alphabetical. So let's uh, just burn through this real quick, and then we'll go through who's going to face who. Ready? Okay. This year, um who are the 66 people who are going to be taking part in our open, our icons of MMA tournaments are going to be Anthony the Hunter Adele, the Spider Anderson Silva, Christopher Convery, Bolo Young, Christian Convery, Kane Velasquez, Daniel Pewter, Chuck Norris, 
Speedy Easton McDonald, the notorious Connor McGregor, Biggie Elijah Fortin, the beast incarnate Brock Lesnar. Number 13, even though I'm just reading them here, Isenia Verkovitz from Moscow, Russia. Donatello. Yes, that Donatello. The F World icon, Sean Jazz Stevens. Boyd Money Mayweather. Grayson the Super Duck Russell. George St. Pierre. Henry El Nero Menya. Ivan Drago. Cairo the Pitbull Menya. Jackie Chan. Jaden Brooks. Jake Paul, JoJo the Bodybuilder, Jason Statham, Leo the Bull Curtis, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Lincoln Brooks, Jet Li, Mason the Hammer Odell, Justin Bieber, Noah. The Nightmare Tyndall. Khabib. Yes, that Khabib. Pedro Fontes. Ken Shamrock. Philip Ricardo Jr., the natural king from Tekken. Rafael Kratos Ryu. Logan Paul, Matt Riddle, Leonardo, Kurt Angle, Liu Kang, Sergi Yakolev, Manny Pascal. You got that right. Terry Bogard, Matty B. Raps. Troy the Terror Adele, Michelangelo, Ty the Devil Odell, told you he was returning, Iron Mike Tyson, Tyson Fury, Nightwolf, Eric Bischoff, Patty the Batty Pimblet, Dave Batista, Bobby Lashley, Rob Van Dam, Chad Gable, Rampage, Ronnie Angle, X Pac, or six, Sean Waltman, Dabakato, and Baron Corbin. So those are your 66 competitors. And now that being said, I think you guys have heard it and seen me dump it in. If you can hear it, I'm shaking it up. And now what I'm about to do in between, so you can't even see me hold my sheet up. That's awesome. But anyway, I got my list here. And literally what I'm going to do is draw two names out at a time. And that'll be who's going to face who in, in what round. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw who's, you know, two people at a time. They'll be going out after each other. Until everyone has been drawn, and then I will draw out, I will rename, I will and again read off who's in that round. So let's do that. Let's not waste anybody's time pulling out two the first two names. They are random as random can be. And speaking of X Pac, we're gonna have X Pac from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Taking on Jean Claude Van Damme in the first round, first match, first round for Sean Waltman. So Sean Waltman or X Pac Six, whatever you want to call him, will face Jean Claude Van Damme. All right. Probably not going to read off everyone, you know, twice or whatever. I'm probably then. 
again, read off the two names, and then I'll read off who's in that round so people can keep track. And I'm going to literally fill the rounds and draw until everyone's been drawn. The next match, Jackie Chan. And his opponents, <laughs> Patty the Batty Pimblet from the UFC. I want to remind people that this tournament will be beginning on, Ju on June 4th. So June 4th, this, this tournament will begin. And we'll have, you know, two rounds. We'll have... Probably the first set of match, first few rounds, and then the next few rounds, and then it'll be a three-day tournament, folks. I drew two more names out randomly. <laughs> Speaking of the hammer, it looks like it's hammer time. Mason the Hammer Odell. I mean, there are four Odell boys, so... You have one fourth chance to drive one. And he's facing Iv Ivan Drago, the boxer from Game 4. Uh, well, don't think I, – <laughs> I think that if you think that Mason is under is got a no chance, then you probably haven't watched our show. But anyway. Oh, oh man. And just like that, Pyro the Pitbull Menya. <laughs> and he is going to be facing <laughs> Floyd Money Mayweather. So let me read off again who's in round one. Round one will consist of X-Pac or Sean Waltman versus Jean-Claude Van Damme, Jackie Chan versus Patty the Batty Pimblet, Mason the Hammer Adele versus Ivan Drago, and Hiro the Pitbull Menya, who went second, who came was runner-up last year against Floyd Money Mayweather in round one. Now we just get into round two. Drawing out the next two names. Round two. Oh, man. Speaking of champions, here comes the winner of last year, Ty the Devil Odell. And his opponent, <laughs> Michelangelo. Of the Ninja Turtles. I thought it was an open tournament for a reason, folks. And now you know why it's an open MMA tournament. Next match. Oh, man. Leo the Bull Curtis. Tremendous young man, by the way, who is now... Also competing in crew, which is, you know, rowing and so forth. He's doing amazing in that as well. And as always, we are proud of everyone who's part of our shows. And he's going to be facing Nightwolf from the Earth Realm of the Navajo Nation of Mortal Kombat world. Nightwolf. Interesting. And the next one, <laughs> Eric Bischoff. Eric Bischoff from wrestling. He was a, the owner of WCW. A lot of people might not know that he was a competitor in martial art tournaments way back in the day. He is a skilled martial artist as well as a savvy businessman. And his opponent <laughs> is... The former is the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle. I do believe they know each other. Kurt Angle, of course, you guys might know. He is a 
actual U- uh, gold medalist in the Olympic in, re- in wrestling for the Olympics, but he's also mostly known for winning, doing so with a broken neck. Oh boy, this this round is going to be something else. Also in this round, Speedy Easton McDonald, former Universal Champion for us, by the way. He is new to our roster. But since joining our roster, he has done quite well for himself. And he has also won, done very well in tournaments outside of our world. So interesting to see how he does in ours. And he, oh my. <laughs> so Easton McDonald is going to be facing Anthony the Hunter. Odell. Uh, So last year, when I said how Ty had to face one of his brothers, he had to beat Mason the Hammer Odell, which is not an easy task in itself, but he defeated him. And I want to, I'm going to read off this, this turn, this round again. This is round two, folks. Round two again is Ty the Devil Odell, the last year's winner of our icon of MMA. Facing Michelangelo of the Ninja Turtles. Leo the Bull Curtis taking on Nightwolf from Mortal Kombat. Eric Bischoff facing Kurt Angle. And Speedy Easton McDonald taking on Anthony the Hunter Odell. You have two Odells in the same round. So if you guys do the math, you never know. And last year, Ty did have to face Mason the Hammer because of this is how they were drawn. Anyway, round three. (laughs) Round three. Representing Street Fighter is going to be Ryu. And Ryu is going to be facing (laughs) Dave Batista. Dave Batista, some people might not know, competed in the UFC and is undefeated, by the way, in UFC, as well as made quite a name for himself in wrestling and in film. You guys might know him more from his acting roles lately as Rax the Destroyer. Again, we're in round three, folks. Number 13, Isini Verkovitz. And his opponent Oh man. The American boxer himself, Jaden Brooks. Jaden Brooks and his brother this year who just joined our roster recently. And normally they're in the tag team realm, but Jaden has done very well for himself in the tag team division and the singles division as well. So that'll be an interesting match. Again, we're in round three. And again, after I'm done reading each of the rounds, I will go over each of them again. So everyone's clear. Oh, Jet Lee. one of the fastest martial artists alive (laughs) he's going to be taking on logan paul anyone who watches our shows is probably like are you kidding considering on our show storyline wise the pauls in the brooks brothers have had quite a feud recently so i find it amusing they're in the same round Oh, Khabib from the UFC, one of the greatest fighters out of Russia and one of the toughest competitors in in the UFC, Khabib. Returns, and he faces, oh no, Jojo the bodybuilder. So let us read off round three again for you guys. And then what I'll do is read off everyone in the rounds when everything's over again. So round three is going to be Ryu versus Dave Batista. 
Eseni Verkovitz versus Jaden Brooks. Jet Lee versus Logan Paul. Khabib versus Jojo the Bodybuilder. And now we're going to get into round four. Round four, Leonardo of the Ninja Turtles. And his opponent, <laughs> Chad Gable, former Olympic wrestler, uh, is currently on the wrestling roster, not really seen much of importance, but on our show, we know in real life how talented he is, so... Why not have an Olympic gold? He is an Olympic competitor. Why not have him there? I, I don't have any reason why he shouldn't be. Yeah. Oh, boy. Here comes a name in UFC, folks. The Spider Anderson Silva. See, when you have a tournament or open tournament, you need to make sure it's available for anyone and you can't have a name like that and not have him he's going to face on one of the toughest people from the mortal Kombat world former mortal Kombat champion luke king has anyone seen the new trailers for the new mortal Kombat game coming out again i know we have we're big mortal Kombat people in this house and luke king is going to be in that as well so he does qualify folks Oh, here we go. Hi, here we already know whose brother's involved in earlier. Here we go with Henry El Nero Menya and his opponent. Oh, another UFC legend, folks, Ken Shamrock. One of the early pioneers, really, of UFC. And Henry, who loves competition, who's also adapted really well in boxing, I'm sure looks forward to that challenge. Oh, boy. Here come rep from Canada and representing the chess club is Christian Convery. A lot of people make know him from his role as Sweet Tooth on, well, the show Sweet Tooth on Netflix. Oh, my. And he's going to be facing someone who's new to our roster this year, who's been on our roster, done really well for himself, is Sergei Yakolev, the Russian judo champion, who's going to be taking part in his first tournament on our show in this event. So, Sergei Yakolev. So let me read off round four. Round four, again, Leonardo versus Chad Gable. The Spider, Anderson Silva versus Liu Kang. Henry El Nero Menya versus Ken Shamrock. Christian Convery versus Sergi Yakolev. <laughs> I have the tokens that are all over in front of me, so I'm kind of glad that you guys can't see all that. Yeah, anyway, here we go to round five, folks. <laughs> Representing Tekken is King. And King is going to be facing <laughs> uh, someone making his debut on our show, who's someone who I've actually had the honor of watching grow and do really well for himself from Brazilian jiu-jitsu. World-class athlete, young man, is Pedro Fontes. Pedro and King to kick off round five. Oh, boy. <laughs> Rampage, Ronnie Angle. Uh, allegedly, Rampage Ronnie Angle is the cousin of one Kurt Angle. And he's going to be facing Baron Corbin. 
who a lot of people might have seen on wrestling, but a lot of people might not know. He is a boxing Golden Glove boxing champion. Yeah, we do our research, folks. And uh, oof. the natural Philip Ricardo Jr. Uh, Philip, who, who joined our roster back in August as part of a surprise tag team partner of his then protege, uh, Joe Joe the Bodybuilder. Uh, he is. Help. They have been a really great tag team, but a lot of people might not know that Philip Ricardo Jr. Not only is he a great bodybuilding champion and a legend in that, but he also is trained in martial arts and has competed in such. Being in the military, you all trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Oh boy, and he has has quite a bit of luck taking on big names. And what a name he's got to face, Iron Mike Tyson. A lot of people, including himself, um, really, when he saw his name going up against people, he didn't know. And we currently, we really never know who's going to face who. And um, ultimately, we never call the matches as we do. We just put the matches together. And Philip defeated Hulk Hogan in his prime um, in his first debut. So if you think that Philip is outmatched, you would be mistaken. Taking on Mike Tyson would be a huge deal. Anyway, the last match, Manny, wow, what a boxing name. Manny Pacquiao, the Pac-Man himself. Manny Pascal, one of the biggest names across boxing world. Be great. You know, literally one of the toughest people in the boxing world. And he's going to take on the God of War himself. Kratos. So again, let's read off round five. Round five consists of King from Tekken taking on Pedro Fontes, Rampage Ronnie Angle taking on Baron Corbin, the natural Philip Ricardo Jr. taking on Iron Mike Tyson, Manny Pacquiao, legend in the boxing world, taking on the God of War himself, Kratos. And that will conclude those rounds. All right. Put that over here. Going into round four. Lost my count. One second, folks. I've got a regroup here. My pages got outnumbered. There we go. That's not it. What did I do with the page? <laughs> oh, there it is. Yep. So that's round one, two, three, four, five. Oh, <laughs> silly rabbit. I realize we're on round six. That's why. And yeah. So this year's tournament is a little bit bigger than last year's, but a lot of great fighters in the world. So. All right, round six. Donatello of the Ninja Turtles. And Donatello faces Kane Velasquez, a current UFC monster. And a person who has been able to take it to people like Brock Lesnar and so forth. And whatnot. So Cain Velasquez versus Donatello kicking off round six. Also, oh, Matty B. Raps. Matty B. will be taking on the other half of the chess club, Christopher Convery, who, by the way, just him and his band Thrive just did an awesome show over in Las Vegas, Nevada. And if you guys ever got a chance to see it, you should see them whenever they tour, if they tour. 
a very talented young man. And he is also like his cousin from Canada. Uh, he is also trained in the arts. However, he is from the Las Vegas, Nevada, his cousin from Canada. So, but there we go. And next. Oh, the youngest of the Adele boys, <laughs> Troy the Tever Adele. He is going to be making his debut, folks. And he makes his debut, oh man, against the brother of Jaden Brooks, which is also his debut on our tournament. I mean, he's had matches, but this is his first tournament. Troy has also been on our show, so it's the first time these two will meet as the big man himself, Lincoln Brooks. Set to take on Troy Odell, the terror himself. Yikes. And <laughs> Raphael. Wait a minute. Yeah, Raphael of the Ninja Turtles. We'll be going one on one against. Love when pages get stuck together. <laughs> Justin Bieber. Yikes, what a. Justin Bieber, who loves UFC and one point was throwing out challenges just to never take any of them anyway. So let's go over round six, folks. Round six, Donatello versus Cain Velasquez. Matty B. Raps taking on Christopher, Christopher Convery. Troy the Terra Adele taking on the big man himself, Lincoln Brooks. Raphael of the Ninja Turtles taking on Justin Bieber. Yep, that just happens. I have to clean in front of my computer real quick, folks. I have the tokens that I just drew all over in front of me. And again, you still have many more to go. Um, I just have too much clutter and for those people who don't know you might not but i'm gonna let you know i do not like clutter yeah i am putting these names back in the box in the bag rather that they were in um and again originally i planned on drawing the names out of the bag but the box actually holds more the jar of fate is bigger in size so that's kind of why that is the case and if you're wondering why am i saving the tokens well the winners the only people who will be remaining in the box in the bags will be the ones who advance obviously because then the winners will be drawn again to face off and that's how we go with that anywho now that I have room in front of me, sorry, folks, I will now call out round five. No, oh, round seven. Sorry, round seven. Yep, we're on round seven. All right, we're back. Round seven. Here we go. All right. Trying to thing out. Okay, round seven. Here we go. Drawing it out. Okay, round seven. Kicking off round seven will be oh, one of the toughest people in the boxing world currently from the good old UK is Tyson Fury. And he is going to go one on one against <laughs> Dabakato. Davicato, multiple time fighting champion. He's currently in the WWE. Commander Aziz. He is a fantastic and tough individual, folks. Don't, don't think he's outranked. All right. Ooh. The Beast Incarnate. Brock Lesnar. Uh, 
And Brock Lesnar will be facing, <laughs> well, they're going to get the match anyway, Bobby Lashley. And that was completely random to be drawn because I know there are many people who would love to have the face. I know that Bobby Lashley is someone who has been wanting that particular match for a number of years. Uh, well, we're going to give it to him, and it's going to be fair, and, un and whether the best man win. <laughs> anyway, Jason Statham. You guys know him all too well from maybe Expendables movies. Jason Statham. And he's going to be facing... Jake Paul of the Paul Brothers. Good old Jake Paul. Yep. The box is getting emptier now. I am going to clear the tokens in front of me and put them in the bag that which they came. To again keep some order here. All right. In the last match for round seven, Rob Van Dam taking on oof, Grayson the Super Duck Russell. You know, with the names left in the box, these are some names that I'm surprised we haven't drawn yet. And Grayson. This is his first tournament for us, especially for his first MMA tournament for us. And Grayson has done tremendous in both Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu wrestling tournaments in general. And he is also a form, he is our current champion, I believe. And he is a tremendous young man and our, our hearts go out to him and his family. They had a hard time last weekend, but like the true champions they are, they continue going and they're tremendous people. So we always respect Grayson the Super Russell, um, and as he faces Rob Van Dam. So let's read off round seven again. Tyson Fury versus Davakato, Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley, Jason Statham versus Jake Paul. Rob Van Dam versus Grayson the Super Duck Russell. This is going to be a tournament, folks. Getting down to the nitty gritty, as they say. We're in round eight, folks. Yep. <laughs> and there is a there he is, the notorious one himself, Conor McGregor. And he's going to kick it off with, oh, man, <laughs> someone who already has his number, so to speak. Number one, Noah the Nightmare Tyndall. I should, rem I should remind people, during the tournament, no titles are going to be available for anyone as we are focusing on the tournament. So the BA MMA championship, it will not be defended verse during the tournament. So that should be mentioned. Um, oh boy. Connor McGregor, maybe want to get some retribution since the last time he and Noah faced off, it did not work out so well for the notorious one as Noah. You know, go back and watch the match folks. I can't even tell you what the kid did to him, but anyway, Oh, by the way, a quick congratulations to Noah. As he, I, I was just, I was just uh, informed that Noah has advanced in his belt styles, as he is now a yellow with black stripe. Congratulations to Noah the Nightmare Tyndall on his ev evolution into the belt world of martial arts. Congratulations to Noah. You know, whenever you go in ranking in a belt i mean i had to do that myself in martial arts and it's always a huge honor to go up it shows that all your hard work your dedication is appreciated 
but it's also paid off. And that's ultimately what that symbolizes that title, that what that belt means. I'm talking about the color belt, the belt color system in martial arts. Anywho, the next match, oh, the legend himself, who very well, this is his last tournament, folks, um, as he is hanging it up probably after this year, and he's probably going to be inducted into our Jazz and Sons Hall of Fame this year. But the, Amer the man with the many jokes, Chuck Norris. And he is going to be facing the Huntington Beach bad boy, member of the F4L, Daniel Pewter. What a huge honor that would be to be the one to face Chuck Norris in his last match. The last tournaments. <laughs> yeah, we're getting down there, huh? Sweet. All right. Terry Bogard from Small Town, USA. You guys might remember Terry from the various fighting games. Terry Bogard making his debut on our show and he's going to be facing <laughs> george st pierre rough rough rough, rough uh, draw there ufc legend george st pierre going up against terry bogard of the of the video game world all right we're getting down there, folks. And the last round, we got two names left in the final match for round eight. Oh, it's Biggie Elijah Fruton. Elijah made his debut on our last show, and Elijah is one of our newer stars. And we expect big things out of the young man who is tremendous in all sorts of combat sports, has won multiple championships and multiple tournaments. And, and the Big E himself has come home to us, has found his way onto our show. And we look forward to seeing how he's going to do in the tournament and go in rankings in the, in the world of our show. So Big E, Elijah Furton. And he is going to be facing Matt Riddle. <laughs> of course, Matt Riddle won that uh, reality show. Uh, I think it was Ultimate Fighter, I think. And he is well known for his war of words with people like Brock Lesnar and multiple other people. And we have but one round left. <laughs> and that is round nine. And now we're going to be drawing them out. Follow Young. Follow Young, of course, you guys might remember from all of those um, Jean Claude Van Damme movies. He's usually the villain in a lot of those. Very tough individual, former bodybuilder champion, by the way. And lucky ducky me, I get to face him. How lovely. The F4 icon, Sean Jazz Stevens. Brutal. <laughs> All right. Drawing out here. Solo Sokoa, street fighting champion. He goes up against Shane McMahon.
And Kieran Cross. As he takes on. The prodigy himself, Jackson R. Scott. That is not a full thing, folks. We have a less, we don't have enough for that now. So it's only going to be round nine is actually going to be consisting of one, two, three, four, five, six. Because we ran out of competitors? That can't be right. No, it's definitely not right. Hold on. We're going to add people, I suppose, because we can't not have that. So let's go ahead and add a few people. Let's go with Shelton Benjamin. Who, for those people who don't know, is a he was trained with Brock Lesnar back in the day in the wrestling in the in the sports wrestling world and he was also trained with him in the Olympics and multiple other things he is a NCAA champion so don't think that he's outmatched and he's gonna go against in the last spot we're gonna go with I guess we're gonna have to go with um, Braun Breaker, I guess. <sighs> you know what? In order to do that, probably need a round 10. So now <laughs> I have to find, I have to make. Things up for round 10. We're going to have people. That's what I get. All right. That's easy. Rick Steiner of the Steiner Brothers is a former collegiate wrestler. And he could take on his brother, Scott Steiner, who is also a collegiate wrestler. Why not, right? Yeah, man. I hate when I run out of people. That's terrible. Let's see. <laughs> uh, ba -ba -ba. All right. <laughs> I guess we'll go with Akira Tozawa. He's a, supposedly a ninja, I suppose. Um, he can go against Otis, who's an Olympic weightlifting champion, believe it or not. Uh Embarrassing when you don't have when you run out of people to face. You know, Undertaker likes to, you know, throw hands. Undertaker is probably one of the best strikers in the business. Um, you know, why don't we put him against? You know, I might have to bring back some of our peoples. You know, you know, KD Smooth is always trying to get, you know, kind of trying to build himself up. We'll put KD Smooth in there with him. The Undertaker, of course. And in the last one, we'll we'll do. Uh, You know what? I just remembered Jack 
of Jack and Tim also likes to box. Folks, I'm making audible. No, I have, no, I'm not. If Rick can face Scott Steiner, Jack of the Lucky Ones can take on Tim of the Lucky Ones because they're both trained boxers and like to work out. So for the first time ever, the Lucky Ones will go one-on-one -on, -one on our show. <laughs> Aren't you guys the Lucky Ones? And that'll end round 10. All right, so let's read off all of these again. So, wow, that's a lot of people. Did I miss anybody? How did I do that? Huh, so I didn't. All right, folks, let's read off everyone from round one all the way down to round 10. You guys can again hear who's facing who and when. So you can always tune in and cheer on your favorite competitors and again this is a tournament that will be done we again we have no control over the outcomes of anything as always and we wish everyone the very best of luck so let's go with it let's read off all of the matches again for our tournaments round one x-pac versus Jean, versus jean-claude van damme Jackie Chan versus Patty the Batty Pimblet. Mason the Hammer Odell versus Ivan Drago. Tyro the Pitbull Menya versus Floyd Money Mayweather. Round two. Ty the Devil Odell, the champion from last year, taking on Michelangelo, the party animal of the Ninja Turtles. Uh, I should mention Hyro who is in round one is the is the person who came in right behind ty last year and it was a war folks anyway ty the devil odell versus michelangelo in the round two uh leo the bull curtis versus nightwolf eric bischoff versus kurt angle <laughs> excuse me Speedy Easton McDonald versus Anthony the Hunter Odell. You yeah, got two Odells in the same match. Whew, that's going to be interesting. In the same round, rather. And there's a, yes, that is a chance that they could face each other. And that is something I'm sure that they are prepared for. Because last year it happened. <laughs> and uh, there you go. Round three, Ryu, Ryu versus Dave Batista. Asini Verkowitz versus Jaden Brooks. Jet Lee versus Logan Paul. And Khabib versus Jojo the Bodybuilder. Jojo, of course, is our very first Grand Slam champion on our show, winning every title we've had. Is he going to win his first MMA tournament? Bodybuilding is usually his thing, but you never know. Leo, sorry, round four is going to be Leonardo versus Chad Gable. The Spider Anderson Silva versus La Liu Kang from Mortal Kombat. Henry El Nero Menya versus Ken Shamrock. Christian, sorry, yeah, Christian Convery of the Convery Chess Club from Canada taking on the Russian judo champion Sergei Yakolev in his first tournament for us. King from Tekken takes on Pedro Fontes in round five to kick off round five. Round five, King versus Pedro Fontes. Rampage, Ronnie Angle versus Baron Corbin. The Natural, Philip Ricardo Jr. versus Iron Mike Tyson. And Manny Pacquiao versus Kratos, the God of War. And that's round five. Round six, Donatello versus Cain Velasquez. Maddie B. Raps versus Christopher Convery of the Convery Chess Club. Troy, the Terra Adele, takes on the big man himself, Lincoln Brooks. And Raphael of the Ninja Turtles takes on Justin Bieber. Round seven, Tyson Fury versus Daba Kato. Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley. 
Jason Statham versus Jake Paul. Rob Van Dam versus Grayson the Super Duck Russell. Round eight. The Notorious Conor McGregor versus <laughs> number one, Noah the Nightmare Tyndall in that rematch that we never had. Chuck Norris versus Daniel Pewter. Terry Bogard versus George St. Pierre. Big E, Elijah Furton versus Matt Riddle. Round eight. Round nine, Bolo Young versus the icon, Sean Jazz Stevens. Solo Sokoa versus Shane McMahon. Karrion Cross versus the prodigy, Jackson R. Scott. Shelton Benjamin versus Ron Breaker. Round 10, Rick versus Scott, St Rick Steiner versus Scott Steiner. Akira Tozawa versus Otis. Undertaker versus Katie Smooth. And Jack versus Tim of the Lucky Ones. Yup. There you go. There you have it, folks. That is everyone who's taken part in our tournament. It's going to be epic and iconic. And what are you guys' thoughts? Who are you guys thinking? Who are your picks for this tournament this year? Last year, as I mentioned, some of these names are people we had on our show last year. They did compete, and they brought the best that they could. In the end, it came down to Hyro the Pitbull Menya and Ty the Devil Odell. And in the end, it was the devil's time to rise as the as Ty won. But this year, who knows? Who knows what will happen this year? Maybe Hyro will win this year. Maybe Henry will. Maybe Troy will win. Maybe their Super Duck will win. We have so many amazing athletes. You never know. It could be X-Pac for all we know. Or Matt Riddle. Or Brock Lesnar. Ryu. Liu Kang. It's not out to us we have no control over it after we hit play so to speak uh, i mean i i would have to say that i if i was going to guess i don't really like justin bieber's chances or maddie b for that matter but you never know so there you have it if i was going to guess i mean i could say i can do that i guess i can kind of predict some things i don't know for sure again I, nothing has been done yet and it'll be iconic when they do there's only going to be one winner and again what i'm going to be doing is whoever advances in their rounds will be added to another list and then you know prior to that you know last round we're going to be doing another one of these lives where i'm going to draw who faces who again for that and then we'll, so, so it's ultimately fair as fair as can be. So guys, that's going to conclude it here for me now. Uh, that was our open MMA tournament. You never know who's going to win. It's, it's impossible to kind of predict something like that. But it's going to be iconic and it's going to be great. Um, and all of these people are deserving to be there. Um, it's open, like I said. So, and again, next year, next month, the Dream Warriors are going to get their chance to shine, as they're going to be able to step in there and show the world what they got as well. Do not, do not under miss under miss. Um, don't uh, underestimate your opponent, and don't think just because someone might have a name per se that they are outmatched, because you never know. You never know. So there's that. Um, yeah, so that's going to kind of do it for the live drawing of who is facing who. Um, as far as the weekend goes, oh, I guess I should just mention as an added thing while I'm here. I want to say thank you to everyone who wished, uh, sent emails of condolences for my mother, who I lost 13 years ago today. Um I'm often reminded of her courage, her strength, and her ability to put on a smile no matter what your 
feeling on the outside, um, or whatever you're feeling on the inside, rather putting on a smile so you don't offend others, um, would be kind of how you work for things. So everyone, I got more work to do as we are very excited for our tournaments coming up next month. Um, you heard who's facing who. It's going to be epic. Um, if you didn't hear your name and if you're not added, there's going to be reasons for that. And I'm going to be telling you, and I'm going to be honest with you guys, because I don't, I don't sugarcoat things and I don't, um, um, I, you know, it is what it is. So one, either I reached out to you and you decided not to take part, which is fine. And it's okay. It's, and you know, it's not for everybody. I get that. Or you didn't get back to me in time because I started reaching out to people probably around end of March and the cutoff was kind of right about now. And honestly, um, you know, the people who we've invited to be here are people who in the past I have offered spots to, and we are finally allowing, you know, we're bringing them in here for this tournament as promised. Um, if you want to be considered for next time or you want to be added to our show after the fact, you need to reach out to me at WOW Dream Matches. That's W O W D R E I M M A T C H E S at gmail.com. And uh, let me know if you want to be part of our roster, if you want to show the world your skills. We don't have just martial artists or combat sports people we have music people out there in the world and many others as well um and after this tournament we're going to have many spots are open uh because all of these um people aren't necessarily these are some of these people are guests to our show um are honorary competitors but you know the, most people know who our roster are and who our regulars are but the winner of the tournament will probably have, if they're not already on our roster, will probably have a guaranteed spot on the roster, um, as they've earned that at least. Um, and I could tell you that people like Pedro, who is returning this one, will probably be remaining on the roster as he's a tremendous young man, and I think he has the opportunity to do so. And Elijah, who is just starting really what he can do, and we look forward to seeing what he's going to do as well. Um, but we also have some other people who are going to be returning and some new original type things going. Um, again, we have the show on the 24th that's coming up. And a reminder of when our shows are on YouTube. The 4th and the 14th is when the Dream Masters are usually on. That's the male's roster. And the 9th and the 16th is when the Dream Warriors, which is our female roster, are their shows are on. Admittedly, I have to be honest with you guys, um, we have fallen a little bit behind with a lot of that because of things that have taken up a lot of my time that have now that I no longer have to worry about. Uh, so now I can focus more on this and I apologize to all of my loyal audience out there that and I want to apologize to you guys that I haven't been as on as much as I have been or have not produced as much as I should have because I was tied up with other things that have nothing to do with me anymore. Um, so I apologize for that. But to all of those people out there who watch our show on a regular basis and appreciate everything we do and what our stars do and what they represent, uh, we thank you guys. We, we, you know, all honesty, years ago, I was ready to pull the plug on this. It was you fans who brought this thing back and saved it ultimately um didn't really realize the magnitude of what our stars brought to people and what they meant when you get emails from people when you're hearing things like people like jojo the bodybuilder and Jaden brooks and people like that are inspiring people in ways that are just amazing um stories to hear um and i think one of the most famous ones we've had is uh, the poor young man who was battling cancer in Canada, who by, who recently I read an email on my Instagram live from the woman who sent a, or, you know, wanted to follow up. 
uh, since then, that young man has not only defeated cancer and is in full remission, but he now goes back to where his clinic was, where he got treatment in Canada and shares our and shows the other kids in our in the, the clinic our show. And they have their, all their favorites on our shows. And we're very happy that, you know, our stars can inspire some people because we have people of their age who have to battle adversity on our show. And that kind of gives people hope ultimately. I mean, I can understand how that works. Um, and I'm humbled that so many people are inspired by our amazing athletes and our amazing people in general. We have some of the most talented people on the planet on our show. Some, you know, some, you don't know yet, but you will, or you should. Um, as mentioned, we have a lot of people who come from all walks of life. And, you know, ultimately, everyone has different goals and different, you know, mindsets and have, you know, different paths. Um, and it doesn't mean one's better than the other. It just means everyone has different opinions on what they should be doing or what they want to do. You could have two people who want to pose on, for, for example, you might have two people who want to, you know, be about fitness and want to pose for, you know, showing muscles and so forth. But some people just want to be in shape. Some people want to be bodybuilders and some, you know, and some people want to be fitness models. Believe it or not, there are three different goals. Uh, to be a fitness model, you got to just kind of be in natural great shape to be just in shape that's really up to you what you consider to be what great shape is and then to be a bodybuilder obviously takes a lot of time commitment in all honesty if i'm being honest you have to have um you have to be very you have to not have a lack of modesty if you want to say it if i want to put it that way um it's one thing to pose in front of a mirror or in front of the camera for yourself for people but to stand in front of a room full of strangers you know, that's where you're going to have to dig down deep and answer that question. Is that something I want to do or is it something I'm not ready for? And that's something only you can answer. So to all those people out there who can't really, who, you know, are kind of doing the same kind of an idea, you know, just got to have a goal in mind. And, you know, a lot of people like to ask people's opinions and I get that. You want to get feedback from people. But what I've seen is just lack of feedback and more like either, you know, blowing smoke or people being nice or just people being kind of jerks, given this supposed feedback. And ultimately, that's kind of what happens when you leave other people's decisions up to you, up to them and have them decide for you. I often say to people, you know, don't really worry about what everyone else in the world thinks of you. You need to ultimately be comfortable with yourself. You are the one who has to, you know, go through whatever it is you're going to do. You're the one that, you know, ultimately decides what you do in life. You're the one who decides how great a shape you want to be in or what you don't want to be in shape. That's up to you. It has nothing to do with anybody else. No one... Honestly, having a bunch of complete strangers rate you and tell you know tell you how good you're doing. I get why you would want to do that because you want to kind of get that feedback, but the world's not full of people who are who are honest who want to give you that feedback. If someone at and people can actually vouch for this, if someone asks that of me and asks me to give them give me their give me give them my opinions. I give them honest truth feedback. You guys probably can't see it anymore, but at one point I was one of the people, I was always in a gym growing up and it was something I always enjoyed. I got injured and I couldn't, I wasn't allowed to work out in a gym, but if you think that I'm out of shape or I'm not healthy, then you would be grossly mistaken because my endurance level, you can't change an athlete. You're either an athlete or you're not. I played multiple sports. 
my endurance, my blood pressure, my cholesterol levels, all top notch. Um, a lot of people look at me and say, well, you must eat a lot. You must, you know, really take in a lot of calories. <laughs> if I'm being honest, I, I'm lucky if I remember to eat breakfast or lunch. Um, I get busy with life. I get busy with achieving my goals and my dreams and whatever else I have to do for the day. So I don't really pay attention to, sometimes I, I do have a tendency to miss out on breakfast or lunch because by the time I realize, well, maybe I should eat something, it's already noon or one o'clock in the afternoon. And I've been up since five every day, regardless. And then I go to bed at you know ridiculous times too. So it's all about what you're known for, what you you know doing for, and so forth, or what your goals are. And the last little bit I wanted to add, um, and I really feel bad about this too. And again, this was mostly for the Open MMA tournament, but I also you know this being the F World Headquarters podcast. I also wanted to acknowledge the fact that I feel horrible that, um, you know, last, this, last month was our three-year anniversary we've been doing this show, and I barely even did a show um, because I was tied up with, you know, other things. And I want to apologize to all my loyal listeners out there because ultimately, before you know, when everyone else in the world was kind of running around with chickens with their head cut off and couldn't kind of figure out what they wanted to do in life, I said, we need to give people hope. We need to give people an honest feedback. We need to give people something to look forward to. So I did the icon. I did the Up World Headquarters podcast where I introduced you guys to some of the icons that I mentioned today. And we had other people too. And last month, ultimately, what I should have been doing is having, having, is, has had, Former guests come on last month to celebrate three years of doing this show. And I'm saddened that I didn't really do that. And I'm sorry to all the one for doing that. And I want to make a promise to you guys from now on, I will not do that. Um, this show and the voice that comes from it, this voice, my voice, words are so powerful. And in the right to the right people, they can open doors or they can ultimately get people either through the hardest times or they can cut someone down. Words are very powerful. And I'm someone who likes to inspire others to do what they can do in life. So. Um. So I will be going back and trying to bring some of these people back in now. And we're going to continue to trying to celebrate those past accomplishments. I have to say that I am proud of everyone who's been on this show over this over the last three years. Um, just a, an amazing who's who of people. We've had people from Hollywood, you know, people from Hollywood. I mean, the very first guest on the show was Michael Fishman from Roseanne or the Connors and look how things have changed over the time. He's going on to doing other things. And I got to tell you, I'm going to try to bring Michael back on here because, um, you know, honestly, he's one of the people who, one of the few people in the world who, you know, understands what re real life is it also has achieved great things and is an inspiration to people, but is also one of the greatest dads out there. Speaking of dads, Next month is June, which is Father's Day uh, month for those people out there. And as a proud father of two amazing kids who are my reason I do everything, I like to celebrate fellow dads who always put their kids ahead of them. And honestly, being a father is being a parent is not the easiest job in the world. To be a father is not as is not easy. Being a mother is not easy either. I'm not saying one is harder than the other. I think it has to be mutual if you're going to be if you want to you know be effective. I think you have to work as a team. Even if you don't personally get along, you still need to work as a team to help raise kids on their you know in today's world. Um, 
recently um i was you know you know it's friday i don't feel like getting into that today i'm gonna get into that tomorrow or later on, because it's not a time for today. Today's about celebrating the icons of the F4L, the people who are going to be going into our icons of MMA tournament next month, and also celebrating awesome dads who always show up, who are also inspirations to their kids and everyone else around there. It's not an easy job, and it's not for everyone, clearly. But there are some amazing people out there, and I think it would be a shame not to honor them. My kids are my world, and um, I don't know anybody who, um, well, I know plenty of people, unfortunately, who don't really understand those things. But next month, I'm going to be bringing in real dads on the show who are exactly, feel the same way I do, how important you know, their, their role is to their kids, you know, achieving and whatever, and what their kids mean to them. So there's that. And I'm going to be bringing back other icons uh, and people from guests on the show as well um, to kind of commemorate three years of doing the show. And, you know, when we talk about some of the people we mentioned tonight, they've been guests on the show. Hiro, the, the the Menya boys have been on the show here before. Grace and the Super Duck Russell has been on the show before. JoJo, the bodybuilder. Jaden Brooks. Um, Philip Ricardo Jr. We have a mix of everybody who's been on this show. And we're always proud of whatever they do outside. We've had plenty of people on the show that we have shouted out before who have not been on the show yet. But we understand that they're busy achieving. So we don't push, we don't, you know, force. Eventually, I'm sure they will come to the FWL headquarters podcast because there's no place like home. And whenever you come on this show, you can always, you know, rest assured you're going to be treated with respect and you're going to have, you know, a good time. Laid back, relaxed, and not stressed. Um, so everyone, it's also May and it's Mental Health Awareness Month. And I haven't done as nearly as much as I normally would do for this month. And I apologize for that. If I'm being honest, I would have been focused on um, projects that I'm sure everyone's heard about that I've been doing. And now I'm not doing those. So I can focus on the things that kind of make me me. Um, the things that I'm known for and the things that, you know, ultimately help everyone out there. So I apologize that I haven't been doing that as much. Um, I think mental health awareness is important. I think it's important that, you know, we use our voices like this and platforms like this to kind of get those messages out there. It's okay not to be okay. It's okay to have a hard time. It's okay to have struggles. Everyone has them. It's all about how you overcome those things that decides how you are, what you do in life, ultimately. So, everyone, this is going on pretty good. And I have to say that I'm glad that I did this early uh, because I got plenty of other things I got to do. Um, I don't want to take up a lot of you guys' time either. So, everyone, may all your dreams come true. I am the FL icon, Sean Jazz Stevens. You can reach me on my show. You can find me on on you on Instagram at f 4 icon S E A N J A W Z S T E V E N S one on Instagram. You can e re email me at wwdreammatches at gmail.com. If you want to be a guest on this show or you want to be featured on the icons or you want to just kind of get your message out there. Um we don't condone bullying. We hate bullies, actually. I can be honest with you there. We don't like bullies. We don't like people who are um, kind of that kind of thing. So if that's something you're into, we're not going to have that on our show because we live the F4L way. And I am the leader of the F4L, so I know how the F4L works. And there are plenty of people around the world who also live the F4L way every day. And it goes to show you that it is a completely a way to life. Um, 
and peace needs to be a thing and we need to treat everyone with each respect and dignity and not jump to conclusions on things so everyone i am the f icon sean jazz steven saying may all your dreams come true from the f headquarters podcast we'll see you guys soon on the icons of the f4l may all your dreams come true peace everybody <laughs>